the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I am. You know, I, I promised him that I, I would serve him until I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. Well, you know, I was alone and I don't. And I was a sinner too. But I heard a voice from heaven saying, I've got to work for you. I took my master's hand. Yes, I did. And I joined the Christian band. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. Oh, I, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yeah. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. You know I promised him that I, I would serve him until I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my, for my Lord. Yes, I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, thank you, Lord, yeah. I just want to say thank you, thank you, I thank you, Lord, yes, I do. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Well, Lord, you've been so, you've been so good, Lord. Yes, you have. You've been so, so good. Yes, you have, Lord. You've been so, you've been so, so good, Lord. I, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You say my, say my soul. Yes, you did, Lord. You say my, save my soul, yeah. Well, you came down from heaven just to save me, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Well, Lord, you walk with me and talk with me each and every day. Yes, you do. You walk with me and talk with me each and every day, yeah. Well, your word is a light unto my path. Yes, it is. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord, yeah. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Alleluia. Ah, Alleluia. 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 Dr. Jackson. Let's give God a hand of praise and God bless you, Pastor. give Dr. Jackson a hand clap. He's been on the mend. Amen. Thank God to see him here on this morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is so good. God is blessing when? Right now. Welcome to Emmanuel Temple CME Church in Victorville, California, where we do say God is good all the time. All the time. God is so good. And if I did not say Happy New Year to you last Sunday. Let me say it again. Happy New Year. Amen. How many recognize this is 2022 by the grace of God, the goodness of God, the love of God, the power of God. Amen. It is no accident that you are here in 2022. It's designed by the grace of God. Well, beloved, we are in Zephaniah, the man with, with the hammer. Amen. The specialist. Amen. He's a specialist at the day of the Lord. Amen. In your Bibles, would you please turn with me to Zephaniah chapter 2, and we'll look at verse number 3, and it'll give us the intent and desire of God. It says, Seek ye the Lord. Can you say, Seek ye the Lord? Seek. Now, this is the desire of God. This is what God's heart is. This is what he wants. This is what he wants in all this book of Ze Zephaniah. He says, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. When he says the meek of the earth, he's talking about the saved folks. All right, the believers. Amen. Which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. That's the type of life God wants us to live. Seek meekness. Why? It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Amen. So if you seek the Lord, you're going to make it. Amen. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Giving honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. The Bible says he hung, he bled, he died. But on the third day, he got up from the grave. Brother Dove, we thank you for that prayer this morning too. We want to use as a subject title, Judgments of the Nations of the World. It's important that you understand the title because when we're looking at, when we're looking at chapter 1, Judgment was on Jerusalem and Judah upon the house of the Lord. After the house of the Lord is judged, then God goes throughout the entire world judging. But judgment first begins at the house of the Lord. 
Let me say without a shadow, shadow of a doubt, God wants all men saved. I got to drum that home. Judgment is his strange work. But his desire is that all men be saved. And that's going to be very important when we get to the book of Jonah because Jonah wanted some folks to go to hell. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get to Jonah. Amen. Uh, God is looking for sinners to repent. And God's utmost desire is that men and women, boys and girls, be saved and that they worship him. And that was the intent all the way back in the Garden of Eden. Yes, but I need to back up this morning that God wants everybody saved. Yes, sir. If you go with me in your Bibles to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and look at verse number 4, the Bible says, who will have all men to be what? Saved. That's his desire. So if you want to know what is the desire of God, God don't want to send folks to hell. He wants all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Does your Bible say that? And then Peter also says this to make it cl uh, clear that God is looking for the salvation of sinners, the repentance of sinners, that folks turn to him. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and Verse number nine, the Bible says, the Lord, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word. Mm -hmm. Why? Not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should come to what? Repentance. Repentance. Now, that's the heart of God. That's the desire of God. Even though we see the, the harshness of the message in Zephaniah, God's heart is that still he wants us to be saved, and he does not want anybody to perish. Mm -hmm. We must be aware that if God judged his own people, and they could not escape judgment, what makes us think we're going to escape? <laughs> Nobody is going to escape. The unbelievers, the idolaters, the unrepentant, mm -hmm. God will not wink at their sins. Mm -hmm. God takes sin seriously. Yes. God cannot overlook sin in his own people and he can't overlook it in the world mm -hmm. he is a righteous God yes, sir. he is a God of justice he is a God of holiness it's very important that we realize that the places that we're about to mention mm -hmm. and I'm going to mention some places uh, they're very strategically located. They're located in the west. They're located in the east. They're located in the north. And they're located in the south. And there's a message there in this four-point location of the north, south, east, and west, which means the judgment is going to be universal, yes. which means nobody, no matter who you are, is going to escape. We said on last week, you can't pay your way out of this. The believers will be saved, but the unbelievers will be condemned. There is a message here. The God of Israel is not just the God of Israel. He's the God of the entire universe. Mm -hmm. How many know he's God and God all by himself? Some folks think he's just God of certain folks. No, God rules this entire universe. The earth is the Lord's, am I right? And the fullness thereof. In that verse 2, it lets us know why the ungodly should repent and take courage. 
Beloved, if you look at Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse number 4, the, the Bible says, For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Does your Bible say that? If God judged Israel, then he's going to judge all the nations of the world and nobody is going to escape. Nobody. Zephaniah predicted the destruction of four major cities, Gaza, Ashkelon, mm -hmm. Ashdod, and Ekron. They are mentioned from the south to the north. God's judgment begins at the house of the Lord. And now Zephaniah is explaining how the judgment will affect the Gentile nations. Gentiles not going to escape. Am I right about it? The Gentile nations were never given the special privilege that Israel was given. Israel was given the law, but the Gentile nations were not given the law. Can I back it up this morning? Psalms 147 and verses 19 and 20, the, the Bible says, He showeth his word unto Jacob. And how many know Jacob is Israel? Mm -hmm. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Yes, now watch this. He has not dealt so with any nation. Mm -hmm. Did your Bible say that? And as for his judgments... They have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. But how many know to whom much is given? Can I go there? Yes, sir. Much is required. If God gives you more, God expects more from you. Can I go there? If you have the light of the gospel preached to you and you know the word of God, then God is going to hold you accountable for what you know. Mm -hmm. These nations that were mentioned or that are going to be mentioned represent universal judgment. They point to the four points of the compass. Watch it now. Mm -hmm. Assyria is going to be mentioned. They're on the north. Cush, which means Ethiopia. Is going to be mentioned there on the south. Moab and Ammon is going to be mentioned there on the east. And Philistia is going to be mentioned there on the west. Well, what's the message? When the great tribulation comes, all nations of the earth are going to taste the wrath of God. It's going to be a universal judgment is not just going to be certain countries. All sinners are going to be judged. Whether you're in the north, <laughs> south, east, or west. Zephaniah tells us that Philistia, which is represented by these four cities we just mentioned, God says Gaza shall be forsaken. Ashkelon will be a desolation. Ashdod will be driven out at noonday. Ekron shall be rooted up. Philistia is very important to mention them because they were the ancient enemies of the Jewish people. They took Jewish captives from the southern Judah and sold them to other nations. Slave trafficking didn't begin in the United States. Can I go there? Uh, we hear about it in Scripture. How many of you know there's nothing new under the sun? Uh, but the time would come when Philistia's population would be emptied because of what she did to God's people. And the land would be desolate. How many know you reap what you sow? 
How many know it's not good to mess with God's folks? God says, touch not my anointing. Do my prophet no harm. Philistia coastal cities which were made rich by vast shipping enterprises and they were good and rich would be destroyed because of God's judgment. God says he's going to send an enemy in there and going to ruin all their great vast wealth. How many know the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh? How many, said, how many know, blessed be the name of the Lord? Oh, everything Zephaniah prophesied with his hammer, it came true. Nebuchadnezzar came in there. He invaded Philistia and he conquered them, fulfilling the words of Zephaniah. How many know this morning that the word of the Lord is true? How many know that it will not fail? That's why it's good to pay attention to the Bible. If things were fulfilled in the Bible in that day, then it's going to be fulfilled in our day too. Am I right about it? The only thing left of Philist Philistia today is his name, Palestine. God's judgment was so complete that he wiped them out. Can I go there this morning? When God's kingdom is established, the Jews will take over the land of Philistia. The Lord is going to enable Judah to live in peace one day. Can I go there? How many know that there's, there's peace in the Prince of Peace? <laughs> yeah. Let me go a little further this morning. If you look at Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse number 5, the, the Bible says, Oh, and them that worship the host of heaven. Well, Sister Stinson, I mean chapter 2 and verse 5. Sister Stinson said, I know something wrong there. <laughs> well, let, let me go on and read it. She's going to bring it up. But I did put one down here. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coasts, the nations of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you. O Cana the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitants. How many believe God can do that? Oh, yes. Woe is pronounced against the Philistines. They are called Chariothites. They are the people of the Cretans. David used some of them for his bodyguards. They settle in the Mediterranean area and in the coastal plains. Oh, some of David's bodyguards were made of chariothites. Can I back it up this morning? Uh, it's good to get a little history in here. But let me look at 2 Samuel chapter 8 and verse number 18. The Bible says, And Benaniah the son of Jehoiada was over both the chariothites and the Pelethites and David's sons were chief rulers. Those some tongue twisters right there. <laughs> I thought I was speaking in tongues for a minute. <laughs> the Chariotites were mercenary soldiers, Dr. Dove, employed by David as his, his bodyguard. Then Cana talks about Cana. This portion of the land was to be left without inhabitants after God got through with them. How many know that God judges? Mm -hmm. When God gets through with them, the land will only be fit for pasture land, for nomads to come through there. In other words, complete destruction, God says, will come upon Canaan. None of the inhabitants on Palestine coastal plain would be left. When God judges, his judgment is complete. Uh, when was the last time you saw a Philistine? <laughs> Come on, somebody. They have disappeared just like the word of God said he was going to do. 
How many know that God backs up his word? How many know the word is not going to fail? It is God who is ruling this world. It is God who's ruling over the nations. That's what Zephaniah is bringing home to us this morning, that, that God has this entire universe under his control. Am I right about it? Can I back it up this morning? Oh, Zephaniah chapter 2 and verses 6 and 7. The, the Bible says, And the seacoats shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds, and for foals for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon. In the houses of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God, can I go there? Shall visit them, watch it now, and turn away. Somebody say turn away. And turn away their captivity. How many know God works in mysterious ways? How many know it's wonders to perform? How many know God will fulfill his word? Oh, Zephaniah prophesied that the Philistines, the land by the sea, where the Cherethites dwell, would be so empty of people, so depopulated, would become so barren that now, instead of being cities, it would become pasture land for herding sheep. God in his judgment moved the people out and brought in sheep can God do that oh watch it now the believers the small remnant who survived the one who put their trust in the Lord the survivors the, the worshipers the one who kept God's word the one who kept God's covenant the one who repented, the one who prayed, the one who leaned on God. They will become sheep herders. They would inherit the land of their enemies. Can't God turn things around? Yeah, they took over the land of the Philistines, their ancient enemies. How many of you know that God can turn things around? Can I go there this morning? How many know the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous? That's shouting stuff right there. Oh, tell your neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Can I go there this morning? Tell your other neighbor, neighbor. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for me. Come on, give God some praises this morning. Uh, Dr. Jackson, Brother Sister Hudson, Ann and Estella, Brother Sister Russell, and Sister Stinson and Dr. Dove. There's a word inside of the word. Can I go there? There's a word in the word, Dr. Jackson. Uh, I know you know what I'm talking about this morning. God has a way of turning things around. Come on, y'all, turn your, do your hands like this. God's going to turn it around. Although we see a whole lot of evil going on today, oh, it's not going to be forever. God's going to turn that thing around. How many of God's going to have the last say? Do you know why? God loves his people. God loves you. God loves me. God's going to protect his people. God's going to protect you. God's going to protect me. How many of you all know God has the last say? How many know God has the only say? Uh, the Lord, their God, is going to restore things. He's going to give it to the meek. How many know the meek going to inherit the earth? Yeah, God's word is going to be fulfilled. Amen. Oh, good God of my. The Lord cares for his people. And when it looks like his people are doing bad, God steps right in and restores things, turns things around gives them their enemies land. Somebody said, turn it around. Amen. Oh, when the remnant 
puts their faith in God and pray to God, God's going to turn things around and God's going to bless them with, with the wealth of the wicked. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. How do we know that by and by everything going to be all right after a while? Oh, yes. Someone said, thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, God is going to restore Israel's fortune in the future. After he deals with them, he's going to restore them. Judah's future restoration and occupancy of this land fulfills a promise. I want y'all to hear me this morning. A promise that was made a long time ago to Abraham. I heard Brother Dove in his prayer this morning was praying for us to have the blessings of Abraham. How do we know that God keeps his promises? A uh, man may forget what he promised you, but God never forgets. It's amazing that uh, these folks got pretty bad sometimes, <laughs> but God remembered his promise to Abraham. Once God makes you a promise, he is going to fulfill that promise. You know, Israel went all way astray, but God always left a remnant because he made a promise to Abraham, I'm going to bless your children <laughs> and your children's children. Somebody ought to get happy right there. Yeah, if you live a Christian life and, and then uh, you make uh, your, your life uh, given over to God and God says in his word, he's going to bless you and bless your children. How many know God's going to keep his promises? Yeah, can I back it up this body? Can I go there this morning? Genesis chapter 15 and verses 18 through 20, God makes a promise to Abraham, I'm going to give you some land. And now in Zephaniah, some thousand years later, they're inheriting that land and going to inherit all of it in the future. Can I go there this morning? The Bible says, in the same day, somebody says, same day, the Lord made a covenant. Yeah, that, that's an agreement. Am I right? <laughs> With Abraham, saying unto thy seed. Somebody say, unto thy seed. The reason why this is so important in Zephaniah, we see him prophesying, said, this is being fulfilled. Can I go there this morning? Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and the Kenites, and the Kenizzites, and the Kamananites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and Rephaim. Well, did we speak in tongues there? <laughs> well, what's so important about all this? God made a promise to Abraham a long time ago, and God kept his promise. And God kept his word. And God kept his covenant. Well, if God has made the Christians some promises in the word of God, won't he keep his promises this morning? <laughs> Am I right about it? <laughs> it's so important to realize that when God speaks, he will fulfill his word. Well, preacher, what do you recommend this morning? I recommend that you read your Bible. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? <laughs> I recommend that you believe your Bible. Can I go there this morning? I recommend that you follow your Bible. Can I go there? I recommend that you depend on your Bible. Uh, I know y'all don't want to hear it this morning. But that's a good word this morning. Yeah, God is faithful to his word. He was faithful to Abraham. And he's going to be faithful to you. And I'm saying this morning, just believe the word. Step out on the word. Do the word. Meditate on the word. Live the word. Love the word. Breathe the word. Somebody shout a hand clap for God. Come on, somebody. God is going to defeat all of the enemies of the people of God, of his people. Can I back that up this morning? Zephaniah Chapter 2 and verses 8 through 10. Pay close attention to these verses. It lets us know that God is going to protect his children. Can I go there? I have heard the 
insults of Moab. Somebody say insults. And the taunts of the Ammonites. Somebody say taunts. Who insulted my people. Y'all didn't hear that. Who insulted my people. Somebody shout, who insulted my people. Now watch it. And made threats against their land. Therefore, uh, that means a declaration. As surely as I live, Dr. Jackson, declares the Lord Almighty, which means I got some might to back up what I'm going to do. That's some serious stuff. To let you know who I am, the God of Israel. Oh, Sister Anne, hallelujah, Stella, he's going to pronounce a judgment. He says, surely. What does surely mean? Surely. <laughs> Can I go there? It's going to happen. Moab will become like Sodom. Y'all ain't heard of Sodom. Y'all don't know what he did with Sodom. Y'all know what he did to Sodom. The same thing he did to Gomorrah. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? The Ammonites like Gomorrah. Going to be a place of weeds and salt pits. A wasteland for how long? Forever. Does God have some power? Does God judge? The remnant of my people will plunder them. Can I go there? The survivors of my nation. Hmm. Can y'all go there? Will inherit their land. In other words, you, you taunted them, you made fun of them, you did all that to them. They're going to take what you have. Can I go there? That is what they will get in return for their pride. Pride comes before what? A fall. Am I right about it? So he said, this is what they will get in return for their what? For their pride. And what else? For insulting and mocking who? The people, the people of the Lord. Somebody shout the people of the Lord. The people of the Lord Almighty. Does your Bible say that? This is the price. Let me break that down. For messing with a child of God. Can I go there? This is what your father will do, your heavenly father will do when somebody messes with you. Tell your neighbor, God got your back. Tell your neighbor, better not nobody mess with you. Yeah, your father will take up your case. Can I go there? Verses 5 to 7 let us know that God keeps his promises. But when you read verses 8 through 10, it says God will fight for you. Oh, y'all, y'all, come on with me this morning. You don't have to fight the battle. God's going to fight for you. Can I go there? The battle's not yours. Can I go there? The battle is the Lord. Can I go there? Be still, God says, and know that I am God. See, y'all trying to fight and y'all getting in the way of God. God can't swing for y'all swinging. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? The Moabites and the Ammonites were making fun of the children of Israel and, and took advantage of them. And, and then they had great pride and they had great arrogance. Can I go there? The Moabites and the Ammonites, they were happy when the, when the northern kingdom fell, Brother Dub. In 722 B.C., when the northern kingdom fell, then, then they, they taunted and they made fun of them and they were glad for it. Come on, Holy Spirit. How many know that, that we got enemies out there, sometimes they're glad when we're doing bad? How many know that there are folks out there are glad when you are sad? Can I go there? There are folks out there who make fun of you, and when you're declining and look like things are going bad for you, that makes them glad. Can I go there? We all got enemies out there. Everybody don't love us. Some are just pretending, amen. 
Can I go there this morning? Yeah, the Ammonites and the Moabites, they represent those folks out there who make fun of you, who taunt you, don't want to see you do well, don't want to see you succeed, who who lay, lay, lay traps for you, lay pits for you, and then when you do bad, they're glad you're doing bad. Can I go there? Well, when Israel was in calamity, you can check biblical history out, the Moabites and the Ammonites, they came in and took their land and made it worse. Sometimes when things are going bad, some folks have the nerve to come in and put their foot on you. Can I go there? When you're having your troubles, trials, and tribulations, they get on the phone, they're happy about it. But how many know that's not the end to the story? How many know we got a father in heaven? I mean, know that uh, our father says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Um, every opportunity that the Moabites and the Ammonites had uh, to do evil to Israel, they did it. They hated the people of God. The Moabites and Ammonites, <laughs> Brother Sister Hudson, they did whatever they could against Israel. As a matter of fact, it's recorded in the word of God that they did wrong against the people of God. They even tried to have them cursed. Ah, uh, can I back it up this morning? There's some folks who want you cursed, and they'll do all that they can to try to get you cursed. Can I back it up this morning? Those Moabites, they were some kind of folks. They didn't like the people of God. I need to back it up this morning. Numbers chapter 22 and verses 4 to 6. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says, The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde, talk about the Israelites, is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the fields. So Balak, the son of Zippor, who was the king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pethor, or Pethor, near the river, in his native land. Balak said, a people has come out of Egypt. Who are you talking about? Israelites. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Somebody said, oh, oh. <laughs> can I go there? Now come. Mm. And put a curse on these people. Does your Bible say that? There's some enemies out there. Come and put a curse on these people. Because they are too powerful for me. Ah, Can I go there? Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them. And drive them out of the country. Can I go there? For I know that those you blessed are blessed and those you cursed are cursed. But how many know that when God has blessed you, nobody can curse you? Can I shout right there? If God has blessed you, nobody can curse you. And if God has a blessing for you, nobody can take it away but yourself. Can I go there this morning? Uh, Balaam got hired to curse the people of God. What did I let you know? There's some people out there who are so jealous of you that they want you cursed. But if God be for you, y'all don't hear me this morning. If God be for you, who can be against you? Can I go one more? I heard David said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Oh, I, I should stop right there, but I got to go one more step further. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Well, God said the Moabites and the Ammonites, because you have touched the people of God, you're going to become like Sodom and Gomorrah. The land will be converted into salt pits, uh, which means the land is going to be sterile and full of desolations. How many know that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh, yes, he did. So God says, I'm going to destroy the Moabites and the Ammonites, which means I'm going to destroy 
the enemies of God. Well, tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't mess with me. <laughs> I mean, no, oh, God will fight for you. Uh, I need to witness this, but how many know God will fight for you? Uh, David discovered that the way to win the battles in life is to let God fight for you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, stop your fighting and let God fight for you. One thing I like about David, David knew how to do warfare. How many of y'all know how to do sport, spiritual warfare? Yeah, you need to know how to do spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare means just what it means. Uh, you're allowing the Lord to fight for you in the spiritual realm. How many know that David knew that the Lord would fight for him? Can I bag it up this morning? Can I go there this morning? Well, if you look at Psalms 35 and verse number 1. Since this, I don't know if I gave that to you. I don't think I did. But David said, plead my cause, O Lord with them that strive with me. Can y'all hear me this morning? Fight against them also that fight against me. Now isn't that a request right there? David said, I don't want to do the fighting. I want you to do the fighting. I want you to fight against them that fight against me. Can I go there this morning? How many of you believe this morning that God will fight for you? How many of you believe this morning that God will stand up for you? How many of you believe that God got your back this morning? How many of you believe that God will lift you this morning? How many of you believe that God will elevate you this morning? How many of you believe that God will surround you this morning? Oh, he surrounds the righteous with favor like a shield. How many of y'all want to be surrounded with, uh, with favor this morning? Can I go there this morning? How many of y'all want God's angels to surround you this morning? How many want God to lead you this morning? How many want God to lift you this morning? Can I go there this morning? David discovered that it wasn't him winning all these battles. Yeah, David was called in the Bible a man of war. Yeah, can I go there this morning? He had fought many battles. Ah, uh, Dr. Jackson, he fought so many battles that when the women started singing, can I go there this morning? It says, Saul has killed his thousand. Uh, and Saul got happy until they started singing about David. And David has killed his 10,000. Uh, oh, Saul got jealous. He said that he gave, uh, they gave uh, David 10,000. And only gave me a thousand. That's why he got jealous of that boy. And wanted to kill him after a while. Can I go there this morning? God told Nathan. You go tell David it's me. I'm the one who cut off all his enemies. I'm the one who was fighting for him. Can I go there? As a matter of fact it was me who elevated him in life. Can I go there this morning? How many know this morning that where you are this morning, that it wasn't you who got yourself there? Can I go there this morning? You're blessed this morning, but I'm here to tell you that you didn't pull yourself up by your bootstrap. It was God who gave you the boots, and it was God who put the straps in the boots, that you might have the strength to pull yourself up. Can I go there this morning? It was God that lifted David up, it was God that carried David to high places. Y'all don't believe me this morning, but I got back up this morning. Brother and Sister Russell, I got to back it up this morning. Can I back it up this morning? Second Samuel chapter 7, I want you to pay attention here. And look at verses 8 and 9. Can I go there this morning? Well, God told Nathan, you go tell David how he got where he is. Can I go there this morning? He said, now, therefore... So shalt thou say unto my servant David. Uh, can I go there? Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I took thee from the sheep coat. From following the sheep. Oh, Dr. Jackson. To be ruler over my people. Over Israel. Can I go there? And I was with thee 
whithersoever thou wentest. Can I go there? And I have cut off all thy enemies. Y'all didn't hear me. And I have cut off all thy enemies. Y'all didn't hear me. And have cut off all thy enemies. Can I go there? It wasn't you. Can I go there? And have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. Can I go there? And have made thee a great name. Somebody shout great name. Uh, like unto the names of the great men that are in the earth. In other words, you are what you are because of me. How many know this morning that you are where you are because of Jesus? Am I right about it? How many know you have what you have because of Jesus? How many know the portion of health you have in your body is because of Jesus? How many know the rightness of mind you have is because of Jesus? How many know what you have in your pocketbook and the back pocket is because of Jesus? I dare you to give God some praises this morning. I dare you to thank him this morning. I dare you to worship him this morning. I dare you to magnify him this morning. I dare you to glorify him this morning. Well, he's done so much for us. He fought for David and he fought for you. Am I right about it? He protected David and he protected you. Give God some praises. Amen. Yeah. The Lord fights for his people. The Lord vindicates his people. And the Lord judges his enemies. Well, tell your neighbor, neighbor, no one can escape. Oh, Zephaniah, bring your hammer out and hammer some more. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse number 11. The Bible says, the Lord will be terrible unto them. Well, that's pretty good right there. For he will famish all the gods of the earth. Well, he's going to prove himself to be the only God. Am I right? And those gods are spelled with a small g there. And those has an S and there's more than one of them. Can I go there? And men shall worship him. Watch it. Everyone. Somebody say everyone. Men shall worship him, everyone, from his place. Even all the isles of the heathen. Everybody in the end is going to worship the Lord. Is that all right? Can I go a little bit further? Oh, Dr. Dove, in the millennium. In the thousand year reign of Christ down here. Dr. Jackson, God is going to remove all these little gods out of here. Can I go there? He's going to prove that there's only one God. And he's God and God alone all by himself. Am I right about it? Can I back it up this body? Uh, can I go there this body? Philippians chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. There's a message to all of us. Can I go there? That at the name of Jesus. Can I go there? Every knee should bow. Am I right about it? I need a shouting folks this morning. Of things in heaven. This is what's going to happen during the millennium. And things in earth. Am I right about it? And things under the earth. Can I go there? And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Is he Lord this morning? Yes, to the glory of God the Father. Ah, uh, Zephaniah saying that one day God is going to judge all these little gods of the world. And there's going to be a day coming in the future that every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God. Am I right about it? Well, sister, sister, I know I didn't give you this one. Malachi chapter 1 and verse number 11. That's one of the, the later ones that came through the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Malachi chapter 1 and verse number 11. Ah, uh, that scratched us where we itch. For from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Can I go there? My name will be great among the nations from the rising to the setting of the sun. In every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to my name. Somebody said, my name. Oh, shout my name. 
because my name will be great among the nations. Is that coming up? Oh, yes it is, says the Lord Almighty. Let's give God some praise this morning. Oh, let's get prepared this morning for that day coming. Amen. Every knee is going to bow one day. Well, as Zephaniah gets ready to close out chapter 2, he lets us know that from the north, south, east, and west, judgment is going to come. Can I go there this morning? This is going to be universal judgment, which means nobody is going to escape. Well, Zephaniah chapter 2 and verses 12 through 14. Oh, my Bible says, you two old Cushites. Well, who are the Cushites, Pastor? They are the Ethiopians. Can I go there? Will be slain by my sword. He will stretch out his hand against the north. Somebody said north. And destroy Assyria. Oh, those are some violent folks. Leaving Nineveh <laughs> utterly desolate. And dry as the desert. Somebody said dry as the desert. Y'all don't know nothing about no desert. Can I go there? <laughs> Flocks and herds will lie down there. Creatures of every kind. Oh, judgment has come. The desert isle and the screech isle will roost on her columns. Judgment has come to this city. Their calls will echo through the windows. Rubble will be in the doorways. The beams of cedar will be exposed. Oh, preacher, what's going on here? Judgment has come. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, the hooting will echo through the windows. Watch it now. How the Bible speaks. So far, Zephaniah, Zephaniah has foretold the judgment of God from the east and then from the west. What's he doing here? Now he's going to talk about judgment from the south to the north. Oh, come on, Dr. Jackson. Those Ethiopians were on the south. He says they're going to be slaughtered with the sword. And oh, this came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar came through there. God's word became true. He slaughtered them. Oh, that slaughter will go from the south to the north. Well, who's in the north? The Assyrians are in the north. Oh, the capital of Assyria is Nineveh. Can I go there? God says he's going to destroy Assyria as well as Ethiopia. Oh, he says the capital city, Nineveh, just like Washington, D.C. is our capital. He says it's going to be destroyed. Matter of fact, he breaks it down. He says, it's going to be like a wilderness. Well, why would that affect their thinking? Well, Assyria in that day was known as a, a great country of irrigation. But God says, I'm going to take your great irrigated country and I'm going to turn it around into a dry wilderness. How many you know God can do something like that? He said, that, that city that had all those people there, I'm going to pull the, the people out and put, put porcupines in there, hedgehogs in there, pelicans in there. How many know that God can turn things around? The same God that blesses you can turn around and curse you. Can I go there this morning? Oh, when those beautiful buildings are destroyed, Creatures of all kinds will come in and live in there, God is saying, in place of people. This is judgment. This is the judgment of God. The same God that says God so loved the world is the same God that can judge you when you're disobedient. Am I right about it? Oh, this word will be fulfilled. Uh, God says the sad singing of some of those lonely birds will be heard through the windows to let the people know that judgment has taken place over that city. Judgment has taken place over that nation because they refused to repent. They had great pride. They went against the people of God. How do you know it's bad to refuse to repent to God? 
Can I go there this morning? Oh, uh, can I break it down this morning? Uh, can I bring it to a conclusion this morning? The Christ rejecting sinner does not have a happy ending. Oh, it's not happy ever after for a Christ rejecting sinner. How many know it costs to reject Jesus? Oh, right now he extends his hands out and said, Come and receive me as your Lord and personal Savior. But one day, if we keep on rejecting, we're going to have to pay the cost. Oh, can I go there this morning? Oh, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse number 15. As I come on in and start landing my plane here. Can I go there this morning? This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly. Somebody say carelessly. It's bad to be careless. Can I go there, Dr. Jackson? That said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. Isn't that arrogance right there? I can see God saying that, but I can't see man saying that. How is she become now a desolation? Can I go there? Is this in your Bible? A place for beasts to lie down in. Does your Bible say that? Does your Bible say that? Everyone that passes by her shall hiss and wag his hand, saying, oh, look what happened to her. How come Assyria, like the devil, became arrogant, full of pride and haughty? Babylon did the same thing. Rome did the same thing. The Greeks did the same thing. How many know that when we get too big for our bridges, get too arrogant, get too boastful, get too high-minded and won't humble ourselves, how many know that God can bring you down, take you down a notch? Oh, the magnitude of a, of a serious destruction makes people go by wagging their tongues and wagging their hands and saying, look what happened to Assyria. Can I go there this morning? God will, brother and sister Hudson, brother and sister Russell, and Estella, Dr. Jackson, Dr. Dove, Sister Stenson, God will judge all idol worshipers. God will judge all Christ rejectors. Am I right about it? God will judge all covenant breakers. Can I go there? God will judge all word rejectors. Can I go there? God will judge all mockering, mocking people. Can I go there? God will judge the hard hearted. Can I go there? God will judge the stiff neck. God will judge the stubborn. Can I break it down? God will judge the demon worshipers. God will judge the devil worshipers. Can I go there? God's going to judge all the witches. Can I go there? God's going to judge all those folks taking pleasure in sin and act like there's no God. Can I go there? God's going to judge those folks who, who say, you know, I don't want to be bothered with God. Don't give me that God stuff. Can I go there? God's going to judge all rebellious folks, all revilers, all those who hate God. In the end, God is going to be king of kings, Lord of lords, Lord of lords yes, sir. and master of everything. How many know this morning that there's only one God, one Lord, one Savior, one king of kings, and one Lord of lords? One master of everything, of everything. And how many know that one day that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning, a hand of thanksgiving. The God of love is the God of judge, but he wants all men saved to come to him. I want to pray with you on this morning. 
Because I do know God loves you. And I do know God wants you saved. And God wants you blessed like Abraham. After Dr. Jackson ministered to us in song, I want to pray just for you. God bless you this morning. Dr. Jackson. calling you on this morning, calling you, you to repentance, calling you to turn to him. Judgment is his strange work. His handiwork is his love for you and his ability to save you right now. Give your life to Jesus on today. Starting this year off in 2022, God wants you to become part of the family of God, part of the people of God. Oh, dear Jesus, I give my life to you this morning. I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe that you died for my sins on the cross of Calvary. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins and wrong I've done. Have mercy upon me, dear Lord. Give me the Holy Spirit to live inside of me, to guide me and lead me. I thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, now I pray the blessings upon your people. The blessings of Abraham through Jesus Christ. We saw how on this morning that you are faithful to your promises. Even if you made them 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, you don't forget. You keep your promises. So, Lord, we're asking for the blessings of Abraham from Genesis to Revelation over our lives, over our family lives, over our church family, and even over our nation, Lord. Touch us this morning. Bless us. Heal us. Elevate us answer our prayers on this morning and I pray in the name of Jesus that 2022 will be a prosperous year in Christ that all the blessings that are in that book the 66 books will be upon your people and that we will give you all the praises all the glory all the honor in Jesus name we pray we say amen God bless you all until I see you again. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thou, the spring of Love all my comfort, my comfort more, than, more than life to me. Whom have I? Whom have I on earth beside me? Whom in heaven? Ooh, in, in heaven, heaven but with me. me oh come on church I'm calling, calling you Savior oh, Savior, Savior. Oh, join us you all here. hear my oh, humble, humble cry oh, 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 why on the stop or call
mean by 